Hello, I'm Bushra from QA Milestone and in this series, we are exploring Cypress, a front-end testing tool. If you haven't watched the previous videos in this series, I recommend you do. In this video, we'll learn Cypress commands to efficiently identify UI elements. Now we already know commands like get and contains which are used to identify elements. But many a times they by themselves aren't sufficient to uniquely identify an element. And so today we'll be learning more advanced commands. And we will be working with the scenario we picked up in the last video, where we learned advanced commands related to URL. Let's go through the scenario once again. So Conduit is our demo application. The first thing we need to do is log into the application. Then we would create a new post. We'll go to our profile and mark this article as favorite. And then we'll verify that it exists in the favorited articles tab. We'll finally unmark it as favorite. Refresh the page and this should be gone. And then we'll go back to my articles tab. That's it. So let's jump over to Visual Studio Code. We'll create a new spec file. Now because we are working with the same scenario, it would be easier if we copied the previous script code and update it with our new commands. The code is also available on GitHub. So our first test here is to sign into the application. Let's log out. And sign in. Now on this page, we need to input email and password and then we need to hit the sign in button. So let's inspect these elements. So here we see that input boxes for email and password and also the sign in button are within the form element. So when we are concerned with elements that lie within a particular element, then we can use a command called within. Let's first see how to use it and then we'll discuss its benefits. I'll comment these lines. So first, we'll get the form element and then we'll look for elements within the form element. So input type equals email and input type equals password will be searched within the form element and not in the entire document. And cy root.summit will submit the form. This is only possible because the sign in button is of type submit. Here. So the major benefit this provides is when you have multiple elements on your page which might not be unique. So to identify them uniquely, you can concentrate only a subset of the element they are held within. So let's quickly sign in. And now our next test is to create a post. To create a post, the first thing that we have to do is click on new post. And that is this element. So this new post element is a child element of this. So let's see what we can do with this. 
instead of this we can have we'll get to the parent first let's just keep it till here and once we have this parent we'll get its children using the command children So this would give us all the children of ul dot nev bar nev element. But we want one in particular, the one with the text new post. So for that, we can use contains. And we'll finally click on it. So what we have done here is we have first identified the parent element and from there we identify all its children and then we are again filtering it down to the particular one that we want. So like children, we have got many more commands that can be used to access element by relation. Like we have got parent, parents until, children, sibling, previous, next and many more. And I recommend you check this post out where I've given examples of each of these commands. So let's click on this. Now this again looks like a form. Let's check if it is. And yes, it is. So we can again wrap these commands using within. Let's do that. Okay, so can we replace this with cy.root.summit? Let's check. Well, it does not have the type summit and so we cannot. Uh, let's just format our code quickly. If you are using Mac, you can press Option Shift F. And if you are on Windows, you can use Shift Alt F. Okay, now um, could we also improve this a little? Probably we can. Let's see what we can do about this. So within this form, article title is our first input box. So what we can do is, instead of specifying the placeholder, we can use a command called first. cy.get input will return all the elements of type input that are within this form element and because we know there are multiple input elements within the form we need to specify which particular input box we need to work on and so we have used a command called first which will return the first input element that lie within the form element. We'll also drop this from here, but we cannot use first here, right? And we do not have a command called second. But what we have is equal, eq. And within it, you can specify the index of the element. And the index starts from zero. So this is our second input. And so we specify one here. And to specify the last element, we can use the command called last. But this is text area and not an input box. And this is just one in the complete form. Right. So this is so our input box is just one in the complete form. So even if we skip this, it's going to work perfectly fine, but we'll let it be here. So to access elements by index, we can use first, last and eq. 
to identify an element at a specific index in an array of elements. Let's quickly create an article. OK, so we are done with our second test. Now for the third test, so we need to go to our profile here. So probably we can use the same structure we used for new post. Okay, then let's first click on it. Then we are verifying that my article should be visible. Okay, and then this was the main pain area. We need to mark our article as favorite, but there were so many of them. So can you guess what we could use here? I hope you answered that correctly. We could simply add first here. And we are using first because the most recent article you create would be on the top of the list. And then the rest of the commands are just fine. We can add first here as well. And that's it. We'll save it. We'll now run this. And our test passed even with so many of these favorite buttons. And so we have accomplished what we set out to. Congratulations. So let's quickly recap what commands we learned in this video. So we have used within, root, summit, and then, then we have got children. And I told you we have got many more commands that work based on relations like parent, parents, parent until, siblings, PREV, next, next all and more. You can check out examples for them here. Then we work with first, EQ and last. So I hope you enjoyed learning these advanced commands to efficiently identify UI elements. See you on the next video.